Hey guys, Nigel here with you, Nigel's Modelling Bench, and back with you. Been away for a while, been doing lots of work on the Land Rover, been doing lots of resin casting of Lancaster engines and stuff. In between all that, I've managed to get the Vulcan finished. Now, in part 24, we said about the um, the end of the video, and I'm going to do some um, photographs and get some, some nice pictures for you. And unfortunately, I can't do that at the moment because the Land Rover's in the garage. I can't move it because it's too bloody heavy and it's not running yet. Um, and I want to use my ramp to sort of position the model on and get, you know, some a mirror in there so you get a nice picture of it underneath as well. And also get the B-52 alongside it. So once the Land Rover's out of there, then I'll do a final reveal then. So we'll probably start on the Lancaster before we see a final reveal. But just for now, here it is. You can see, you can see all the canopy glazing there after all the masking's come off. Got the little side windows there for the nav guys and then they've got the little tiny window in the back here a little tiny window there i believe that's for dinghy inspection and then we've got the side windows there unmasked as well for the um for the pilot and co-pilot and as you can see when you look in there you can actually see the seats you can actually see the the harnesses and everything and um yeah really really nice so i'm really pleased with how it's come out i think the weathering looks um looks good remember to unmask the uh the landing lights as well here um and yeah i mean i think the bombay looks Looks great. The bombs look suitably dirtied up and rusty. If you remember, one of my followers was telling me that some of them would be left out for 10 years and some of them might have been just a couple of days old. So, yeah, that's what we've done with that. Um, if you haven't seen any of this, if it's, the, if it's the first Vulcan video you've seen of mine, then go back. There are 24 parts to this build and a lot of it is aimed at sort of new, newer beginners, newer starters. So, um, you can sort of get a grip, a grip of the uh, the techniques and tools and everything, and that is basically what this video is all about. Um, back in I, I don't know about part eight or something, something like that. Um, and I've had a couple of video, a couple of emails as well. People saying, can you please do a video on the tools and paints and everything you used? So I've just had a quick whip through all twenty four parts. I'm bound to have missed something out, but um. I've tried to get together all the, I've got them all around me here, they're everywhere, all the tools and paints and everything, so we can go through it and talk about the where you can get them from and the, the whys and wherefores of why I use them and the alternatives and everything. You'll find that a lot of this stuff comes from Premium Hobbies purely because Premium Hobbies is a great stockist of tools and glues and paints and everything, all your sort of modelling materials, and also now for a good couple of years I'd say, um, I've hooked up with Ed and done reviews for him for his products and everything. So obviously I go to him now for my stuff, um, my Tamiya masking tapes and everything. I, 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 I've mentioned before that I go to Mr. Models for him, but um, I didn't realise that Ed did the Tamiya tapes. And when you actually look on his site and go deeper into it, um, you will find that there is, he does a huge, huge range of stuff. At the moment, obviously, like everybody else, he's struggling to get um, material. When I say at the moment, today is the 14th of September 2021. Um, and after the pandemic and everything, there's, there are people that are struggling to, uh, to get hold of um, stock. You know, so, uh, and they're finding they sort of, you know, they want to order... I don't know, a big Mr. Hobby order of all your Mr. Surfacers and all they get is grey 1500 or something. So that's what's going on. So we're going to get the Vulcan out of the way, have the bench clear, and then we'll look at some tools. Right, so I'll try and do this in kind of categories like gluing, painting, filling, whatever. Um, but I'm bound to go offline because like I said, I'm just surrounded with tools. So basically, first things first, the first tools we're going to need are a knife. Now I use these. These are the... Um, the Swan Morton scalpels, bit of beauty of them, they're rock, rock round so they don't roll off the bench. Disadvantages and they're fairly slim so sometimes they're a little bit difficult to pick up. But I like using them because they don't roll off the bench. Also the blades are readily available and they're very cheap. Uh, this one's a 10A and this one is a 10. So be careful when you're ordering. If you're ordering off a site that just has a description and no picture, they're both 10s but this is the A and this is the, the non-A and you can see there's a massive difference. These I like to use very much for photo etch because you can um, go like this and, and cut your photo etch. These are great for general modelling. I also forgot to say, guys, sorry about my hands, they are disgusting. I have been cleaning rubber hoses on the Land Rover and it seems to have soaked into my skin. I should have worn gloves, but um, <laughs> getting resin on them as well doesn't help. So basically, yeah, we, um, we have our knives there. That's the knives I like to use. Alternate knives you can use 
Oh, this is one, this is an Olfa knife. I got this off a friend. This is a, a Japanese knife, tiny little blade. Um, and it's great for little small jobs, but the problem I find with it, it's not very good at following a straight line. They don't tend to, when, when you try and cut down the side of a rule, they tend to want to wander, um, unlike these. So I tend not to use them very much. So that's, um, so that's the knives I use. That's the two Swan Moderns. And then for the cutting, for getting parts off the sprues, if you're going to get into your modelling, you're going to, it's a hobby you're going to continue with. I definitely recommend getting yourself a nice pair of cutters. You can get cheap ones. You can get the cheapy, cheapy ones like these, which aren't really very good at all, but they're good enough to get you going. But you really want to look at getting yourself some of these. These are the, again, these are Sawboy Premium Hobbies. This is the 74035 Tamiya Cutters. And as you can see, they've got a very, very sharp edge on them. Okay. And the other beauty is, if you look at uh, normal side cutters, there will be a, a bevel on the back of the blade, so you're not cutting right up to the, the sprue. But whereas with these, because they've got the, the flat back on them, if you can see there when they're closed up, they're dead flat, you could get right in close. When they're brand new, you can use them to go right up close to the parts, cut them off and they won't make any damage. As they start to blunt, you need to be careful because they will actually rip a little chunk of plastic out. It's best to usually just stay away from the part and just cut away from the edge. Um, but these are the 74035s. There are also another one, there's 74129, I think it is. 74129. And these, that's these here. Now these have, you can see these have a slightly longer blade, okay, and they're slimmer. It's a much slimmer blade when you look at it from the front. I don't know if you can see that really. But it's a much, you can see the, the ground angle on the side. This is This one here is a slimmer blade. And as you can see there, it's chipped. And that is the problem. With the slimmer blade, they chip very, very easily. And that was literally just cut in plastic. So what I tend to do with these, I tend to kind of, they have a, um, an, order of, <laughs> an order of use. So when they're brand new, I only use them for removing parts. When, they, when the pair I'm using now become a little less sharp, um, I will use them for cutting sprue. Okay, so these would just be used for cutting parts off a sprue. These would be used for cutting the sprue itself. Then you get, as they get older, you can work all the way down to cutting brass and everything. But as you can see, when you start cutting brass rod, especially with the cheaper cutters, you will ruin the blades. And I've ended up now with serrated blades on them. Okay, so that's what happens. You, you destroy your blades. So uh, that's what I do. But I, that's one tool I would definitely recommend if you're getting into the hobby is, first of all, get yourself a good knife, a scalpel, um, you know, something like that, and a pair of cutters. So that's the cutting side of things to start with. The holding side of things, now there's tweezers. You can get, these are, if you buy a model from Dave Coley's and Porham, you might get some free in the box if you're lucky. These are great, these little tweezers. You can get these cheap Chinese sets. Um, as you can see, this has got resin and all sorts on it. They're very, very good. The trouble is with cheaper tweezers, is what you will find is you get this sort of thing, as you close them up, if you can see that, but as you close them up, they kind of, you're holding something and they flick like that and the part flicks out across the room. Same with these Dave Coley ones, they're very good because they don't tend to do that. But you can see with these, these cheaper Chinese ones, they will just, you can hear it, you can hear as I close them up and then they, they click off each other. Okay, so it's always worth buying decent um, tweezers. But if you can't afford them, use the cheap ones. Get these Dave Cody ones, they're pretty great. Um, the only ones I really use out of that cheap set is these with the wider end on them and then they can't, they can't sort of flick out really. So that's you want to Also get these um, clamping tweezers. These are really good. You've seen me use these on the cockpit of the Vulcan and they are obviously reversed. So when you let them go, they hold the parts. So they're really, really good. They're handy for holding things for painting, which is what I generally use them for. And because they're all metal, you can just dip them in some thinners and wipe them off. So that's good there. Clamping. Now, clamping parts together is also a big necessary task when you're modelling. Obviously, you've got your good old family clothes pegs. You've also got your good old fashioned wooden clothes pegs like these. You can see I use these for holding. But um, these with the rubber, rubber, ones, rubber fingers are great because they tend to grip. Like if you're clamping a wing, they won't just slide off, whereas these will tend to slide off. And also with these, if you look at this, you can see you can make reverse clamps and make a much stronger 
clamp that, that clamps much tighter than that one okay and all you do is you take them apart and you turn the wood around and it makes that okay so have a good look at that freeze frame do a snip whatever and then you can see how that's been made okay and if I put it next to an ordinary clothes peg you can see what I've done okay so there you go so that's clamping um, there's also this clamp you'll see me using a lot and while watching the video Keith said to me no just throw that rubbish away get yourself something decent so I bought these and I did a review of them and these are the um these are the Tvingvar for Model Big. <laughs> these are, I can't remember what company they're from. Go back and have a look a few weeks ago. I did a review of them and I said where you can get them from. And I believe since my review, the price has gone up. So they've obviously been more popular. So that's clamping. I've also got these little, um, I can't recall the name, Bulldog clamps, is it? And these are really handy for having, for holding parts for painting. They're also really handy for like, um, if, you, if you're trying to hold something very slim, like I, I used these actually, if you remember, I used these for holding, I can't remember what I did now. I hold, held some parts together that were very, very slim. And um, because they've got such a sharp edge on them and it's metal, they will clamp very, very small parts together. So that's really handy there. So that's clamping taken care of. Um, scribing, now you know that I've done lots of reviews and all sorts of different scribers. My go-to scriber, particularly for beginners, I was asked about this last week, is the Tamiya scriber. Or it's, called, it's actually called an Alpha P cutter. You can see on the blade there, if I can get it in the light, you can see it says Alpha. Okay, it's Japanese manufacturer, um, same as that yellow handled knife I just showed you. And it's basically, um, it's, it's used as a scriber and it's great for getting you started for beginners because it doesn't tend to want to wander. It's a V-shaped end. So as I said in my recent scribing review, when you're scribing, you're basically doing this. You're producing this gouge in the plastic. So the deeper you go, the wider you go. And that is the problem with these scribers. So when you've got your teeth and you've got a bit more experience, go for the sort of nicer, you know, the, um, like I did a review of these. These are the um, Funtech scribers. Let me just get one out here. And you can see you get, the, with this one, you've got a square chisel edge. So that as you go deeper, you're just producing a deeper rectangular recess in the plastic it's not getting wider so it's really really handy to get the really nice ones um, but but really when you've you know when you've done a few kits and you're getting into the hobby but for starters for, for beginners and learning this thing is great the other disadvantage with this one because it's got such a fat head on it it's very difficult to get into corners like um, if I wanted to scribe in here into this corner here okay I can't get in there because the blade's so thick. So what you do then is grind the front of the blade off. So um, another little tip for you there. But yeah, for beginners, for starters, get yourself one of these and then progress on to the um, to the later stuff. You know, the, I tend to start with that, put a line in, and then carry on with the nicer stuff afterwards. So that's the um, that's the cutting. Uh, and scribing. Now gluing, um, I've actually got a new edition which only actually came today. I've had a, a kit delivered today from Ed. So I've got this Tamiya white cement. First time in my life I've ever bought it. Uh, I've had the orange one. Got it here somewhere. Here it is. I've had this one for years and I think it's the same stuff. But um, basically it's a thicker glue and it's great for assembling larger parts. So I've never had any, so I've got myself some now. And this is the nice premium hobbies holder that you get. You can put all your three. So we've got the extra thin, quick setting, normal extra thin, and then the ordinary thicker glue. Um, extra thin, quick setting is brilliant for doing things like you saw me do in the undercarriage and everything, when you just want to put the door in and let it go and not have to hold it and everything. This one is... It's not as this is a hotter glue, the extra thin quick setting is a hotter glue. If you glue two parts together and then put a second application on with this one, they generally fall apart because it'll just dissolve what was already there. Whereas with this one, it won't do that. Um, but this one, you've got a lot more time to work. If you're using this one and you've got a little part and you come along with the brush, you've got a little part in your hand and you come along, and you just put some glue on like that. And then you put the top back down and you get the part and you find by the time you got to the model, you can see there it's gone. Okay, in fact, here's a little test we can do. We can put a drop of that on there. One, two, three, four, and it's it's practically gone already. You can see it's practically, there you go, it's gone, right? Whereas this one, 
put a drop of that on there and that will stay a lot longer I don't think you can even see that on there but it's dead. the drop's still there it's still wet it's staying wet it's still wet and as you can see it's just staying wet so you've got much more time to work with it so the extra thin the normal green one if you're only ever going to buy one glue that's the one to have there's a still a slight wet mark there it's still wet so as you can see it's going on forever and this one this one you can see it's a lot thicker and it will stay there forever basically it will stay wet for a very long time so i'll just wipe that off Okay, so that's the that's the um, that's the two glues I used mainly during this build. Didn't use that one at all, obviously, because I didn't have it. Um, then we've also got our Mister Cements. Now this is the this is the equivalent to the Tamiya Extra Thin, and this one, the SP, is equivalent to the Quick Setting. Now I like to use these for larger assemblies purely because they have a bigger brush; they hold more glue. So if you're, you know, if if I'm say putting some drop tanks together or something, some large drop tanks, I will use this one purely because it's a bigger brush and I can get more glue in there, get a nice solid joint. This one again, it's quick setting, it'll just dry on you in, the, in no time at all. So, you know, again, it needs to be used in the right application. Go back, watch the videos and you'll see where I use them. I also use this one, which is pretty much this one. Okay, this is Mr. Cement Deluxe. So basically what we've got here, if I swap those two over, Okay, there we go. If I swap those two over, a tight fit in there. That's what we've got. So you've got your, your purple, your blue, and your yellow. You've got your light green, your green, and your white. And that is basically your equivalents in Tamiya and Mr. Hobby. Okay, so that's basically all our glues there. All right. And then also, if you really want some something slow, you can get this one here, which is the Ravel Contactor, which is a pain in the ass um, tube. Somebody did recommend on my channel that you can use a cigarette lighter to, 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 to clear the glue out. I would not recommend that at all because if there's pressure built up in there and you put a cigarette lighter there and as the glue melts, the glue comes out. You can see now it usually dries out and this one's still wet. But um, as the glue melts, you get the pressure build up. You might end up with a little tiny mini flame flower. So I wouldn't recommend doing, I mean, you could take the needle out and heat it. To, to clear it but I wouldn't recommend doing it um, with the glue still attached and I keep moving that premium hobbies thing there so there we go so that's our glues taken care of we'll get those over there out of the way okay so that's all our glues done now the this one here I think I use Sprugo on the on the nose gear bay this is basically Tamiya extra thin okay so again this one here mixed with white card now it's called Sprugu, which is really a false name because a lot of people disagree with Phil Flory on this one. I, I agree with Phil Flory 100%. Phil Flory only ever makes Sprugu with white styrene sheet. And that's what I do because then you know you've got a constant. I have tried it before with Spru. Um, one I particularly remember was with Hobby Boss Brown Spru. And what basically happens when you put it on, you've got nothing left. It just dissolves. It's very, very strange. With the, white, with the white styrene, you do tend to get a known quantity. And you can see I mix it here. Okay, and what I do is I mix it so that it just doesn't string. So now that is slightly too thick. So it could do with another drop in there. If you have it too thin, um, it has the disadvantage where it will just shrink away a lot because it's more solvent than, um, than glue. If you have it too thick, it tends to sit on the surface and not go in. If you're going to use it for gluing as well as filling, um, you want it on the thinner side so that it will penetrate into the joint. But basically, that is just Tamiya Extra Thin. I've done a video on it. Go, go, go to my channel, search Sprue Goo, and you'll see it on there. And I'll talk all about how to make it and everything and what I do. Um, but basically, that's all it is. And this is the styrene sheet, and you've seen me use this in a couple of places. If you're new to the hobby and you don't, you want to get into scratch build or whatever, get yourself a couple of sheets of styrene sheet for a starters. Get some 10 thou, which is 0.025 millimeters, some 20 thou, which is 0.5 millimeters, and some 40 thou, which is one millimeter. Just get yourself a sheet of each. You get it for a pound 50 or something. Um, and then you can make strips from it and stuff if you want to. But it's always handy to have, you know, for, 
for you know if you want to, like I you saw me box up the um, the front nose gear bay which I needn't have done because the undercarriage actually goes onto the lower wing um, and basically you can use it for all sorts and then don't ever throw any away keep a little box like this and when you get the tiny little bits like you can see in the bottom of there they can go into your sprue goo so that's what I have there right so basically we're still in the building thing so obviously we hold our models together and we use all sorts of different rubber bands and clamps and stuff like that um, we also use tapes and my three go-to tapes are the Tamiya 6mm, the Tamiya 10mm and normally the Tamiya 80mm although this one in here you can see it's a, it's a lighter colour yellow this is the Mr Hobby 18mm I much prefer Tamiya, I, I'm not so keen, it's, I, I can't believe I'm actually doing it but I actually don't think the Tamiya is as good, uh, the Mr Hobby is as good as the Tamiya, I much prefer the Tamiya but um, that's just my preference that's all so use those for um, for holding parts together, clamping around uh, fuselages and stuff, dry fitting and everything like that. And if you don't want to go to the expense of buying these holders, you can buy them here as a refill. So you just buy them as a as a refill there, and as your six, ten, and eighteen. That one comes from Mr. Models. I've just had some in today from Ed. So there we go. So that's you can get those on Ed's site. Go and have a look. He's just had a fresh delivery of Tamiya. So uh, there we go. So that's your Tamiya tape six, ten, and eighteen absolutely awesome and if you buy them like this once okay when they run out you can take the front off and just replace just the tape and these are only a couple of quid they cost next to nothing and they're so much better than using ordinary you know household masking tape they don't leave the glue deposits behind they're much thinner and they have a much sharper edge and I've also got this one here this is the Tamiya flexible tape you'll see you've seen me use that one on the camouflage um, so yeah love that one to bits which is absolutely great um, I also used, where is it, here it is, not prepared, I also used blue tack, didn't I have to remember, and I also used white tack. Now the difference in these two, blue tack is um, very, very good for holding stuff for painting and everything, but I wouldn't recommend it if you're using it for masking, use white tack, it doesn't have so much oil, so it doesn't actually leave a deposit on the surface and if you do take it off and you find you got little bits just roll up a little ball and go over it and use it to pick it up it acts like its own glue so there we go so that's those right um, so that's masking tapes taken care of again staying on the building abrasives for sanding stuff down this is the premium hobbies holder and this has got all the infini sanding sticks in it so we've got our sponges here which are lovely and soft lovely soft sponges for doing round things and everything um, we, and they're they're just called the sponges these here are called the matador sticks this one's absolutely worn out so I need to replace it but these basically go from 400 up to 7,000 in a set so they're good for everything they're fairly hard but they're not as hard as these which are the zebra sticks and these go from 100 up to 800 and you buy them in sets um, and then you've also got these here, which are the, these are the photo etch Infini sets. And then you, you buy a set of these. So you've got all these different shapes like you can see there. Okay, going down there. And then you buy the self-adhesive, um, self-adhesive uh, abrasive paper and glue it on there. And then when it wears out, just cut it off, clean them up, a bit of thinners or whatever, and then put a fresh piece on there. And these are really good for like, if you want to file out something where there's a sprue nib, in say an access panel and you want to be careful not to rock and make gouges in the side they're really really good for that so bear that in mind and then these are the zebra sticks as I said here's a set of zebra sticks brand new so you get a set, set of six in there as I say they go 100 up to 800 they're absolutely brilliant I love them to bits um, biggest downside to them is when you get them new they feel very coarse and you use them for the first time and it's like they're worn out and the first time you use them they're not worn out it's just taking the tops off and then they sort of if, if you think of when this brand new is a hundred percent after using it for a few times it's literally like 70 percent but then it stays at like 70 to 50 percent for months so I mean, I've got these here these have probably been used for about a year and that's the hundred and it's still you know pretty coarse but it's nothing like as coarse as a brand new one so um, worth bearing in mind that one. I never really worry about grits. I just tend to, I know how rough things are. Um, so that's the zebra sticks there. 
Uh, and then I also use these Flory Skinny Sticks. You'll see this is the, the fine green. He's changed all his stuff now. And I also use these sponges as well. Um, they're great. I wish someone else would make them. Um, I wish Infini would do them because then I could get them from Ed. But the, the, they're really, really good. One of the biggest problems with them is, and this isn't a criticism of Flory's products, they all do it, is as you bend them, they will actually um, wrinkle up. You can see here on this green one that I've used, as you bend them, they will wrinkle up. Obviously this side's got a stretch and this side's got a shrink, so it bends up. And then when you sand in smaller parts, they will actually snap them off. And that is one of the downsides to them. Um, so, but that is not as at all, that is nothing against Phil Flory. They all do that. Uh, so that's where these little things come in really handy. Okay, so they, they will actually perform the same sort of job and they're hard. But the skinny six are just so handy because they're there and then when you wear them out, just cut the end off and, and off you go again. And that's the Matador, that's the, that's the, I've got one left in there, brand new. That's the Matadors, I'm going to have to order some more of those up from Ed. But basically, yeah, that's that's my sort of go-to abrasives now for all the sponges, all the zebra sticks, them, and they're, and they're really, really good. Um, you also saw me using these files. Again, these are available from premium hobbies and these are really really good for getting nice flat clean edges and uh, really really nice the other thing is they're waterproof obviously you can wash them in water they are easily clean off on your jeans just like anything else will and they're um they're, they're really really good again they tend to wear down and then stay the sort of same as they were um, and you've got the small ones there you've got the wide ones there and then you've got these little small ones here again really handy for getting in tight places so they're really, really good. That's the clear file three-way system in the small and the large. Okay, so that's the abrasive taken care of. Um, oh, with the masking, I also use these circle masks. These, again, are available from Premium Hobbies. And you've got the, the sets here. This is the, I think this is the small. Yeah, this is the small. 1 to 2.8 in 0.2 increments. And then we get the next one is 3 to 4.6 in 2 mil increments. That's the medium and then we get the large which is the 4.8 to 6 in 0.2 increments and then we get the extra large which is the 6.2 to 7.6 in again in 0.2 increments so you, you saw me using those for masking the lights and the parts of the canopy and everything absolutely brilliant i think he's out of stock at the moment because people saw them on my build and just went mad and bought them but they are just worth their weight in gold they're absolutely brilliant and as you can see on here, um, you can use the outsides as well. And what I do is stick them down, put some masking tape over them, and I've got them there to reuse again. So really, really handy to have. So that's the masking side of things taken care of. Filling, um, I use this a little bit, but generally I tend to use Mr. Surfacer. Having looked back on the bill with all the trenches and everything that were in it with the sink marks, I wish I'd used this from the start because Mr. Servicer does tend to shrink and keep shrinking. So I wish I'd used this from the start. This is my basic go-to putty. If I want something quick drying, I will use car body filler, which you've seen me use in other videos and you'll probably see me use again. But off the bat, this stuff is great. And get yourself a little spatula or something to put it on with, which is really handy. So tell me a basic putty and a little spatula and you're away. Uh, Mr. Surfacer, which I use for filling, this is the Mr. Surfacer 1000. Go back, look at my videos, you'll see I use this all the time. Um, you use it, you can put it in and sand it, or you can put it in and go in with some rapid thinners or Mr. Cut Leveling Thinners on a cotton bud and leave yourself a panel on behind. So that's the Mr. Surfacer 1000. I also used a drop of the 500 as well. Basically, that's thicker than that one. So that's those two there. I use the Mr. Base White um, in my undercarriage bays and... I think I used it as a primer underneath, didn't I? I can't remember now, or did I use the black? And I also used the black here. No, I primed it in black, didn't I? And then sprayed the white. So basically, there we go. In fact, I might have primed it in grey. But that's your Mr. Services. That's the ones I use. I'm going to have a video coming up soon on all the different products and how I use them and thinning them and, and all sorts of stuff with them. So look out for that one coming soon. But basically, that's what I use. Mr. White 1000, Mr. White, Mr. Black Finishing, Mr. Finishing Service or Black 1500. The Ordinary Mr. Surfacer 1000 and the Mr. Surfacer 500. The other thing you can do with this is thin it and spray it as a primer, which you saw me do. So there we go. So that's that. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo, what now? Paints. Okay, so, well, my airbrush, 
Um, I use an airbrush for pretty much everything. This is my old Iwata Revolution BR. Um, this one is a 0.3 or a 0.35 needle, I can't remember now. Um, and it needs a clean, it's absolutely filthy. Um, and I will basically every now and again, sort of three or four times a year, I will completely strip it down and I will soak it in alcohol or um, in thinners for a good few hours and let it really, really get a good deep clean. And then what I do, a lot of people ask is how you clean them. When it comes to actually cleaning the actual nozzle on the end, I get a cocktail stick and I slice it down the side with a knife. I'll just show you this quickly while we're on the subject. Okay, I take a cocktail stick and then I take a knife. And I got the wrong bloody knife, wouldn't I? And what I do is I slice the cocktail stick down the side and then that, okay, Put a pair of tweezers or something and that little pointy head you can see it's almost going to break off that you can go down inside your needle with inside your nozzle and clean it and scrape it out it's almost like a little reamer or what you can do is cut this again just like so and what you're after is a tiny tiny little slither of wood coming out of the end just like so and then you can go in your needle and just gently clean it out because generally soaking it isn't good enough i don't tend to like ultrasonic cleaners because they rattle everything together and, and that's not good. Um, I used to work in the dental industry where uh, ultrasonic cleaning was exclusively used and sometimes you would get dental burrs coming out with a pat all over them where the heads had been rubbing onto the shanks and cutting them. So um, I tend to not use them. But basically yeah that's my that's my airbrush uh, so that's, good. that's due for a really good clean. Um, so I'll do that in a minute. Um, then brushes, obviously there's all sorts of different brushes you can buy. I've just got these as a trial from, um, from Ed over at uh, Premium Hobbies. This is ones, these are ones that were sent to me by Anise over at Anise over in, um, I think he's in Germany. He no longer ships to the UK, but uh, it's basically a Kalibi brush and you saw me using that one for the, in the cockpit and everything. And then this is a, I've got this brush out. I love these big soft brushes like this. This one you can see I've got written on there, Flory Wash. I only ever use this for Flory Wash. Flory Wash does not like to be contaminated with anything. So I make sure I only ever use that brush with Flory Wash and nothing else. So there we go. So that's some brushes there. Most of my brushes are old and knackered. I've got an old Tamiya brush set here. Um, I tend not to use them very much, but I do need to get some new ones. And that was why I'm going to give these a go, see what they're like. Um, and if they're any good, I'll get the full set of them from Ed over at, as I say, Premium Hobbies. So that's brushes there. Let's put those away. Um, and then obviously the paints. Now, when you saw me do the cockpit, uh, I sprayed it in LP5, I think, but then I went to X18, so I didn't use up all my LP5, which is the, uh, which is the semi gloss black. Um, X18 is a great paint to use. You thin it with Mr. Color Leveling Thinners, um, or you can use the Tamiya Thinners, but if you use the Mr. Color Leveling Thinners, this one here, it's a lot more smelly, it's a lot more dangerous for your health, but it does give you a, a much tougher paint job. So you can also use the Rapid Thinners as well, which is obviously faster drying, and it's also more potent, so it will probably yeah, give you a bit of a better bite. So that's what I used in the cockpit. And then for all the detail painting, I use paints from here. This is my game colour set that I bought many years ago. And you can see I used the blue, I used the leather brown, and I think I used the, um, the bone as well. This is just basically generic colours, and they're really, really handy to have if you just want black, silver, white, red, yellow, you know, tiny bit for painting details in cockpits. One of the biggest problems with Tamiya paints, they don't perform very well on the brush. You can use retarders, you can um, use different thinners with them. Uh, I've seen the model of a nerd uses of the AHO, um, the AHO airbrush cleaner and that tends to work for him. So um, I've never tried it but I don't really like brushing with Tamiya paints. I have actually got this product here which I have reviewed and used and this is leveling thinner for brush painting and this is from Modeler's World. It works really really well. So that's something else you can do. Um, so yeah, but, but for actual general sort of small detail painting is certain, get an upturned Tamiya bottle, an old, old paint bottle, turn it upside down, drop of that in there, drop of water, maybe thin it a bit, and then brush away to your heart's content. So that's that one there, so that's really handy to have. Um, and then we've also got them moving on, I used yellow, I used the LP8, because it's such a brilliant paint. Um, for the ladders and everything, anything that needed to be yellow, I used that one there, the LP8. Uh, for the engines and the wheels and everything, I used aluminium from uh, this is a 218. This is a, a Mr. Hobby product, 
Mr. Metalizer, uh, Mr. Metal Color, sorry. There is actually a Metalizer as well, I think, which is a slightly different paint. I've never tried it. I need to get some. So that's what I used there for the wheels. I also used a bit of XF69, if you remember, on the tires to get them uh, looking. So I used XF85, which is here. So I've got rubber black. OK, that was for the tyres and then I went round the actual treads of the tyres with the XF69 just to give you a lighter look on the treads, to just improved looks of things. Painting the jet exhausts, I first went over them with the stainless steel, gave them a quick polish and then went over the back end of them with the Alcad, Alcad um, jet exhaust and then a very, very thin clear blue around the middle area just to sort of give a transition between those two greys. The camouflage itself, I used Tamiya's XF81 and I used XF83. Okay, so that's the two colours I used for the for the grey and the green camouflage on the actual aircraft. And I used LP35 for the underside. Okay, so that's the insignia white. I didn't want to use a brilliant white because I wanted the Bombay and the undercarriage base to look more white than the underneath because I just wanted it to look dirty, as in the photograph I had. The little um, fiberglass, I'm not sure if they're fiberglass or Kevlar, the little um, areas on the, on, the, on the spine of the aircraft, on the tail and everything, they've been done with the Tamiya XF59, so they, they were just masked off and airbrushed in. And then I've used, generally for spraying over the model if I needed a flat, I've used the flat coat XF86. Um, I did at one point use this one here for a gloss coat. Alclad 2, and if you remember, I had an absolute nightmare with it. When I went in with my oils, it dissolved. Okay, luckily it didn't affect what was underneath it. So basically, stay away from that product unless you're using it for a final, final coat. If you're going to do, if you do using a gloss coat to do your weathering and that on top of, use this one here, use the Alclad um, Aqua Gloss, which is absolutely brilliant. And I must get myself some more because it's getting low, low that one. So that's what I used there. OK, um, I think I also use some micro crystal clear somewhere along the line. Uh, that's um, basically a white glue, but it's really, really good stuff. Uh, so when it came to using the oils, um, I did some little washes. I used some oil washes here. So again, we've got the Modeler's World. That's the black brown, which I think I used on the wheels. Um, deep black, which again, I think I used on the wheels. And then we've got industrial dirt, which is your, your sort of grey colour rather than a, a sort of jet black colour and I use those in the wheel bays and, and the undercarriage legs and stuff for some detail and then you can thin that if you want to thin it anymore with the oils thinner and cleaner that's basically um, a low odour uh, thinners so you could you could just buy low odour thinners if you want your odourless thinners um, I also used here my oils I've got the Absolute Fantasy Sci-Fi set and I basically bought this only for the Starship Filth and I used the Starship Filth on this one and then I've got my old cheap set of colours, oil colours here that I used and I used the browns and the yellows out of that one and um, that's just basically, that's probably older than me, that set of oils it is very old indeed, I know that so um, there we go, that's what I used there um, so that's all the paints taken care of, so we can get those out of the way up there okay, um, and then, oh forgot this one, lead, bits of lead in the nose uh, if anybody's having an extension done or having a bit of roof work done or everything, grab a bit of lead off them. Um, you can ask for old weights from in, in uh, car tyre shops, you can cut them up. But basically you want bits of lead like this, so you can put in your, for your nose weight and everything. You also get yourself a little set of scales for weighing up the lead and everything. Um, I went over the top with the weights, my model's absolutely fine, but I think you can you actually stick to what Airfix suggests and go from there. Um, if you're doing a tanker conversion with the extra blimp on the back, don't forget that when you're doing your weight in the nose. Don't glue it in with white glue. I used um, epoxy glue to glue mine in with. Um, I've never seen it, but apparently you can get a nasty reaction years down the line with white glue and lead. So it will expand and split your model open or something, but I've never seen it. I also did some pigments with the black underneath. Um, and if you remember, I used uh, the, the black from here. This is the rust and smoke set. From big productions i'm not even sure if you can get that anymore so there we go that's that one um and then i think i can say finally <laughs> i used here we've got the uh deco setting solutions i used micro set and micro soul um for my decos if you remember i used aftermarket decos and they didn't go down very well but basically uh these work really well with pretty much everything i've got a set of dedicated decaline tweezers dedicated decaline knife 
dedicated application brush for it and this is a, a little squeegee you can get from premium hobbies which again is a high cue part and it's great for squeegeeing down your decals you need to be a little bit careful if more for sort of car modelers and that i think large decals on large flat surfaces um but uh you know and it's a it's a skill you need to acquire and how to use it properly so that's basically that guys and again it's in a premium hobbies holder which is a great little thing because you can take the lid off like that and put the lid in there while you're using it and it saves you knocking the bottles over so um there we go that is about that so i'm not sure how long i've been on here because the timer on the camera is not working for some reason that's unusual something's reset itself so there we go um so i will see you all very soon we will be starting the lancaster build very very soon before i start the lancaster build i think i'm going to have to do a how-to video on the engines the, uh, the resin parts I've made because a lot of people have bought them off me and I haven't provided any instruction. So uh, I'll be getting on with that maybe even later today. So um, I'll see you all soon. As I say, I will get the final reveal pictures up of the Vulcan um, very, very soon. As soon as I can get, well, the weather is rubbish today as well. I don't want to be taking the Vulcan out in the rain, do I? So um, I'll get some pictures out in the garage, sort of door open, daylight and everything. Get it alongside the B-52 when we go from there. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, if you aren't new to the hobby, aren't new to the hobby, then you've probably found this very boring. Um, I'm sorry, but this is what people ask for. So people ask, they often get. So thanks for watching. I'll see you all soon. Bye for now.